tonight on KSL Outdoors. All right, I'm bringing it right to you. We're fishing with Mountain West Muskie, Chapter 65, <coughs> chasing the elusive Tiger Muskie. Yeah! Oh! <laughs> Woo! Plus, saving cutthroat after a fire in Southern Utah. I'm Adam Eakle, and KSL Outdoors starts right now. KSL Outdoors with Adam Eakle is brought to you by your local Ford stores. Thanks for tuning in to KSL Outdoors. I'm Adam Eakle. Hey, we got a treat for you tonight. We're headed out with a bunch of guys and gals from the Mountain West Muskies chapter here in Utah. These guys are passionate about tiger muskie. We're gonna show you how to catch them. Hopefully we catch a few. We're gonna show you how to handle them. And we're gonna tell you about some of the things the chapter is doing here in Utah. Hopefully we'll see some tiger muskies, but that's yeah. never guaranteed no. in this game. So we'll try our hardest. We got Joe Weisner with us, good friend of mine, great solid angler. So hopefully we can put something together along with all these other yahoos we got yeah. with us. So the water's dropping, so uh, the fish are actually pulling off the shore. You will still find fish <clears throat> super tight and shallow up in brush, but there's not a lot of brush left. Lake's dropped about five and a half feet in two weeks. It's pretty dirty, only about 16 to 18 inches visibility. So bright baits, loud baits are gonna be the ticket today. Joe, Nick, and Trevor are members of Mountain West Muskie, a local chapter of a national organization called Muskies Inc. These guys are fanatics when it comes to chasing the hybrid tiger muskie found here at Pineview. Muskie, it's always, it's like a number, like an odds game, essentially. So. The more casts you make, the better off you are. The longer you fish, the better off you are. The more rods in the water you have, the quicker you can figure things out. Normally I'm fishing big, big baits right now. I mean, big baits. Really fast, really erratic. With the water clarity and the way things are going, you're, you're better off slowing them down and giving them a chance to find it. Until you hit one in the head. Last year, Mountain West Muskie started helping the DWR with a tiger muskie tagging study to help biologists better understand this toothy predator. There really isn't a whole lot of data on tiger muskies since they're a hybrid. Um, there's a lot of data on pike, there's a lot of data on muskie. But them collectively and their growth rates, how well they do, um, a lot of their behavior, um, spawning or false spawning habits, a lot of that stuff, they're still unknown. So this is a pretty monumental step. Nobody else is doing it. So that's, so that's great and we're just happy to be part of it. When they especially start pushing like the rainbows in the fall, yeah. they're like about that. Oh, there we go, Mon! Okay. Right, I'm bringing it right to you. Slow, slow. Yeah! Boom! <laughs> Woo! It's always important to have all your tools right here. I mean, with, within reach always. Yep. The most we'll important that. thing is keeping the fish out of the water for as little as possible. You want, like they said, keep it in the net, picture, bump board, take the hooks out while it's in the net just so that you're protecting yourself too, so you're not hooking yourself. But the less time that's out of the water, the better. All right, tell me what you're doing here. Okay, so I'm grabbing right here, not its gills. See where my finger is? Yep. Right there. That's actually called the handle. I can handle and support that fish this way. 33 and a half. Okay. This is tag number 267. There you go. Yep. Oh, oh. Okay. So there He's you on the right side now, you had him. Okay. Okay, we take a, we go down low. Pin the handle. Cut about that far off. Tear it off and that's it. it, doesn't even bleed. Sweet. 33 and a half. Is it a male or female neck? Oh, you wanna look? Uh, that looks like a female to me. Cool, and then we'll get it back in the water here. And it's important to keep them upright. Okay, she's already ready. Yep, and she's ready to go, so that's it. 
That fish was out of the water for exactly one minute. These guys say they encourage other muskie anglers to keep the fish in the water as much as possible. Yeah, you try to be as be as quick as possible. Yeah, and you, and you don't have to tag all of them. That took 30 seconds. Yeah. yeah. Usually you can bump them, picture, water. Mm -hmm. That's how fast. That quick. Yep. Yeah. It's and that's quick. why we use such heavy gear. I mean, you saw how fast he landed that fish, but the fight is just. I mean, that's intense. That, that 30 seconds is intense. You know? A lot of guys use boger grips. What's your What's your opinion on boger grips? No. Absolutely not. You can tear their mandibles. You can poke holes in the bottom of their chin. If you are going to use one, uh, use the ones that swivel. But I would only use one in the net to open their mouth and pull your hooks out. Don't hold them with a boker grip. It's not good. Well, now that we've introduced you to the guys from the Mountain West Muskie and shown you their passion, next up we're going to help you with your passion in case this is something you want to do, what gear to use, and uh, how to target these fish. That in a moment, but first, tonight's climate quiz question. Tiger muskie can grow upwards of 50 inches long and weigh over 30 pounds, making them very popular with both anglers and fisheries managers. Because the tiger muskie is a hatchery produced hybrid, it does not occur naturally in Utah. Our climate quiz question is, what two species of fish do biologists use to create a tiger muskie? Once you know these two species, log on to our KSL Outdoors Facebook page, give us the correct answer. We'll then randomly select and announce a winner on our page the following week. The winner, set to walk away with a Climate Static V sleeping pad. KSL Outdoors, powered by Ford. We'll be right back to Pineview Reservoir. KSL Outdoors is also brought to you by Smith and Edwards, Fish Tech Outfitters, Utah State Parks, Burt Brothers, Climate, King's Camo, and Camp Chef. I'll get it out there, give it two or three hard rich, just get it down. It gets down about five, five and a half feet. And then uh, once I get it down there, just kind of give it some snaps and pops, just kind of getting it to walk and stay erratic. And I notice you're figure eight and every time you get back. Every time. Especially in this in this watercolor, because they, they will come out of nowhere and eat it right at your rod tape. He's on it, he's on it, he's on it, he's on it. That was a good picture. Yeah. He was right behind it. Oh yeah. Yeah, I saw him. I tell everyone the same thing. When it when it comes to these fish, it doesn't matter if it's your first cast or your last cast of the day. Pretend like it's your first cast and be in that same zone you were in when you started the day out. Be persistent. Man. Be Just persistent and be aware and be ready because you don't know if it's your first cast, your last cast. It's the one cast that you're not paying attention that that fish is going to eat. You guys got a fish? Yeah, we got one that's about 40. Okay, we're at. Oh, let's go. That's adrenaline rush, but you're doing it. I'm shaking, man. It's good. Yeah, it's good. <laughs> you're doing it. I mean, I've caught, I've caught you know 12 fish this year nothing that big yet i haven't got one over 35 yet but that's my biggest one of the year so far my biggest personal best is 47 so yeah. i'm close i'm shooting for a 50 i want to be in the 50 inch club like a couple of these guys so everything else in here is bait and when you get one of these it's just so rewarding look at his tail yeah nice fish his tail's yeah, on track cool okay you want to put her on the board yep. that way yep this fish is 44 inches nice fish dude okay that's tag number uh, is it 268? 268. Okay. Somebody got a phone. John, you got a phone yep. camera? Yep. Just give me a picture when I pull her up. Okay. And that right there is a female. So it's kind of a mainstay for me. It's just a Rapala brand. Yeah. It's called the JT13. It's a jointed perch Rapala. Um, it's a mid-sized bait. It's more of a springtime bait for me, but we haven't seen any fish today, so I thought I'd maybe downsize a little bit and see if we could turn something. And sure enough. Nice. Yeah, yeah. Another option to casting big lures for tiger muskie is to try trolling them. It's a great way to catch fish, especially when they go deep. Uh, Midsummer, when the water warms up, those fish will. They'll, they'll pull out and they will they suspend on bait out here. Most of our bait right now is going to be suspended between 15 and 20 feet of water. Uh, you always want to be over the top of the fish. Uh, they, they, by nature, their eyes are on top of their head. They're going to feed upward. These guys say use big lures, heavy 80 to 100 pound braided line and a stiff enough rod to help you land the fish fast is a must. Another piece of advice, 
use a big, deep net to control and protect these fish. One of the reasons we fish with such large nets is they, they essentially just turn into a cradle for the fish, a live well in the, in the water. Um, and they can expand completely in it, they can fit into it comfortably, and while you're trying to get release tools and cameras out and that kind of stuff, that fish can stay safe in this net. And it's not gonna jump out, it's not gonna escape. Another great thing that you're gonna need to look for when you get these nets is, th these are nice and thick. Um, when you get those really nylon nets, they shred the fins and the fish bleed. July and August, you see water temperatures approaching 80 degrees. Um, your best bet is to be fishing early mornings. Uh, that hot water really takes a toll on these fish. Uh, they're very fragile. Um, so if you can, avoid fishing you know, midday or late afternoon. Uh, if you're gonna fish, fish early mornings, um, especially when you see the water temperatures approaching 80 degrees. If you see it over 80, I highly recommend you just, you just don't fish or come back the next day early in the morning. Time now to turn it over to Mickey with some more fishing tips on fly fishing terrestrials in this week's Fish Tech Fish Report. It's so hot and dry this year. The grass is all drying up and the only green vegetation left is right on the edge of the rivers. And that's where the insects are. Hi, I'm Mickey Anderson from Fish Tech with this week's Terrestrial Fishing Report. Now, terrestrial is an insect that lives on land and falls in the water. Ants, beetles, hoppers, crickets, and even mice. They all live there and wind or you brush them by or something will knock them out into the water. Now most of the time when you're fishing these, you're just gonna fish them on a dead drift, cast towards the bank and just let it float with the current. But part of the time they're gonna make a move trying to get back towards shore and maybe a little twitch of your rod will add a little bit of life to it and make them come up. Now a lot of these are so buoyant that you can add a nymph underneath of it. Hopper dropper is really a fun way to fish this time of year. Now, if you're throwing a mouse, throw that towards the shore and just slightly swim that back. One other trick in terrestrial fishing is fishing them during a massive hatch. You can have a really big mayfly or caddis hatch and you can get refused on your fly that looks like a natural, throw an ant right in the middle of that and you'll be surprised at how many times they'll come up and take your ant over one of the other naturals. Hey, for these terrestrial tips and a whole lot more, come on down to Fish Tech and we'll help you out. Now for tonight's fishing line. Welcome back to KSL Outdoors. I'm Adam Eco. Well, we're in the midst of fire season here in Utah. Tens of thousands of acres have burned. People have lost their homes, their property. Here in southern Utah, the West Valley Fire is now threatening a native fish species, and biologists are jumping in to save the resource. Let's get going. Yeah, let's get waders and shockers ready to go. We're here trying to save some fish. We've got a fire up on the mountain that's burned through two populations already. So just in case it gets worse or we have some flooding that, that wipes these out, uh, we wanna ensure we have some of this population of cutthroat saved that we can restore this area with the same fish. Head downstream and, you know. You're gonna have to walk down gets, the creek a ways. Yeah. We'll come in here with the electricity in the stream. It stuns the fish. Yeah, it's gonna get fast and furious. <laughs> we net them up bucket them back to the truck and then we put them on tanks like this and then we'll transport them to a hatchery. We always have these floods following a fire because you got no vegetation up on the upland. When it rains it washes all that ash, a lot of sediment, a lot of debris comes washing down into the stream and we get these really high flooding events that happen after fire. And with the ash and the debris, it ends up killing all the fish in the stream. On the Bryan Head fire in 2017, we had uh, at least four streams that we lost all the fish in just because of the flooding afterwards. I would hope that, you know, once they're in the hatchery for a while, that we might be able to um, collect some eggs from these fish. And then that helps us to restock some of these streams in the future and expand them to some other streams where we need to take these fish to anyway. I mean, we got real challenges trying to raise a wild fish, take it to a hatchery setting and keep them to have them survive is going to be a challenge in itself. Um, but we've got some great hatchery guys and got faith and I think we'll be able to do it. 
So the Division of Wildlife was able to capture just over 300 Bonneville cutthroat trout from here from Ash Creek. They'll now head to the Loa Fish Hatchery after they reevaluate the river after fire season is over. They hope to have these fish back in here within a year or two. Hey, time now to check out this week's Utah Field Guide. Hey, we're at the King's Outlet store here in Linden. We're excited to show you some of their new gear. Ryan Fouts, uh, you guys, in my mind, have the best pant to go out hunting, and that's the XKG series. I've worn it for the past four or five years. You finally made it in a solid, so I can go to the movies or I can go wet wading, go fly fishing in them. We did. This has been a great pant for us. This has uh, been established in our lineup for about the last four or five years. Mm -hmm. uh, and we just decided, hey, there's been a lot of demand for people to wear this pant because it fits so good. It's so comfortable. I, I mean, it's so comfortable and it's truly the fabric. Uh, it's four-way stretch. We articulated the knee. It's got a diamond crotch. We do a non-slip waistband in it. Uh, just tremendous. So we offered it in, in uh, dark khaki, which Adam has here, and then we also offered it in charcoal. And because of that pant and its success, we decided that we needed to do one that's kind of a more of a mid-weight pant mm -hmm. and also a late season. So we came out with the Preacher Pan is what we call it. It has knee pads in it, hence the name. It's removable, it's in both of the knees. Uh, we did a side vent on this pan so you can vent yourself because of the heavier fabric. But then we even took it a step further and we, we came out with a Lone Peak Pan that has uh, also side vents. This is a gridded, fleece on the back. So it's insulated, like insulated. November, it's December, January. November, December, yeah. wind break in it. Uh, can't call it waterproof, but highly, highly water resistant. Okay. Again, got the knee pads. Um, predator hunters just love this pant. Late sure. season hunts, you're gonna be extremely warm. Put a base layer under this, you can go probably all day. On the 2nd, 3rd, and 4th of August, we have uh, an event every year with our outlet here, and it's really a pre-season launch mm -hmm. uh, as to what we have to offer going into the fall season. We have uh, hot dogs and drinks and give a bunch of prizes away, so come see us. Get out, try the new pant, you'll love them. I guarantee it, for a wet wade or even out on the hunt or taking your wife to a movie. Hey, let's check out this week's recreation forecast with the guys back in Salt Lake. Hey, welcome back to KSL Outdoors. I'm Adam Eagle. Hey, some exciting news. Climate has moved to Kaysville. Bart Miller, you're just, uh, just north of Boondocks here, just off I-15 on the west side. Yeah, it's a long time coming now. We've been building this building for a little over a year now, so it's uh, I'm just super excited to be here in Kaysville. Your headquarters, but it's also an outlet store. Scratch and dents, people can get uh, some nice Yeah, nice you can do your here. warranty work, get a deal here for sure on some uh, refurbished product, mm -hmm. and, and just come check out the gear. Like, you can lay on our pads here, check out our sleeping bags, pillows. You can see it all here and demo it. Everything you need to comfortably sleep outside, that's what we're known for now. Yeah, we have beautiful pillows as part of our new line. Uh, like you mentioned, sleeping bags. That's my favorite. Yeah. The 20 degree sleeping bag is my favorite. And the oversized one for me. I love me it. Me too. Yeah. <laughs> a lot of room to, yeah, a lot of room to move around and just uh, have a great experience sleeping outside. Good deal. Well, come check them out. They're here just off I-15, again on the west side, here in Kaysville, next to Boondocks. Time now for this week's Snapshot of the Week. We kick it off with the first of four for Nathan on his cutthroat slam. The Utah cutthroat slam is a challenge for anglers to catch all four native species of cutthroat in Utah. Darren is off to a great start with this Bear River cutthroat he caught in the Logan River. Haley and her husband spent the weekend on the Provo River catching white bass. So many families showed up that they ran out of rods, so they went old school and tied a line to a stick and had a ton of fun. Tyler awoke his boys, Raiden and Riddick, up at 5 a.m. for a fishing trip to Mammoth Reservoir. They had a blast eating donuts, talking about life, and a lot of laughs. The day was capped when Raiden reeled in this nice fish. Dad says his smile made all the tangled lines well worth it. Back in June, Darren was fishing for bass and perch at Starvation with an ultralight fishing rod, four pound test line, and a 16th ounce jig when he latched into this monster walleye that tipped the scale at 14 pounds, nine ounces, just one pound shy of the state record. Darren says he was certain the big fish would snap him off during the battle, but luck was on his side that day. And finally, our winner tonight spent days shooting thousands of photos to capture this great shot. Brandon Bright is an aspiring wildlife photographer. He had been observing a family of burrowing owls for weeks on this day the adult male owl caught a June bug 
The adolescent owls began screeching in his direction, and just as this young owl took off to get fed, Brandon was ready and caught this great shot, he says, reminds him of a Klingon warship coming in for an attack. Well, Brandon, I'd say you've got a bright future capturing more great shots like this, as you just won our Snapshot of the Week. Remember, submit your pictures or video, plus an explanation of your latest outdoor adventures, online at ksltv.com. The winner each week wins the new Stryker Multi-Fuel Stove in King's Camel. Perfect for a car camp or to take on the hunt. Plus, the winner is also entered into our Ford Trucks Quarterly Facebook giveaway for a Camp Chef pellet grill. Build your outdoor kitchen with Camp Chef, the way to cook outdoors. There's a reason they call them the fish of 10,000 casts. They're, you know, they are hard to catch and don't be discouraged. If you catch one in your first couple trips, you're on the, you're on the lucky side. Yeah, was, yeah, yeah, I can definitely. There are other times I've been out, I've caught five fish in, you know, in an hour and yeah. I've gone a month without catching fish. So, uh, it's just, uh, well, it's fishing. It is, it is. Hey, don't forget if you get the musky itch like these guys do, you can always join their club. It's it's uh, Mountain West Muskies on Facebook. Yep. Uh, uh, chapter 65. Chapter 65, Mountain yeah. West Muskie. Yeah, if so. you want to learn more about the gear, like minded people who like to chase these toothy critters, and who knows, you might make a cool friend to go out fishing with. I'm Adam Eco, KSL Outdoors. We'll see you next weekend. Good night.